All right, so I'm back working on the Challenger today. And if you didn't already know, this is a 5.7 Hemi out of a 2005 Dodge Durango. And uh, it has a six speed manual out of a 2015 Challenger. And since doing this swap, I've put about 6,000 miles on the car. I took it on a 2,500 mile road trip. I've taken it drag racing a few times and it runs really good. But of course, as with any project car, you know, I'm, I'm always fine tuning it and I'm always upgrading things here and there. So my project for today is to try and help smooth out the engine and hopefully give me a little bit more acceleration. check out that bad boy. This is a lightweight aluminum flywheel and uh, I can't remember the exact weights but I want to say that this one is something like um, uh, you know what I'll <laughs> I'll put the amount here but I'm gonna guess it's something like 11 or 14 pounds or something like that so this should shave off about 10 or 15 pounds from the uh, stock flywheel. I will be weighing this one and I'll be weighing the stock flywheel so I can for sure know how much weight I'm gonna be saving. Now if you read online about aluminum flywheels you'll find a lot of debating about uh, you know is it better is it worse or uh, is it make your drag strip launches worse or does it make your track day or autocross driving better? And I've certainly been down that rabbit hole and I've researched all that stuff, but um, the fact is I actually did run an aluminum flywheel, a very lightweight aluminum flywheel on a previous swap that I did. Um, that was an LS1 engine with the T56 transmission, so, so very similar to my swap here almost the exact same horsepower and almost the exact same transmission. And it was awesome. Um, I love driving that aluminum flywheel. You know, one of the things people say aluminum flywheel does is it makes, you know, shifting harder, or, or I guess like a, making the clutch a little bit more sensitive. Um, if it does, it's not noticeable. So I'm hoping it doesn't affect this one too much either. So of course the flywheel is what uh, bolts onto the back of your engine and it spins up with the engine and it uh, sort of in some ways it sort of cushions the engine spinning. So every time you're accelerating the engine, you're actually spinning up the weight of the flywheel. So if you can save some weight um, with that flywheel, you'll actually be able to spin the engine up faster, which gives you more acceleration. Uh, now, the reason you might want a heavy flywheel is that it can kind of smooth out your clutch action. So it kind of makes shifting a little bit easier, or I should say, um, it makes using your clutch a little bit easier. And a lot of people say that uh, having a heavy flywheel means that it kind of stores up energy. So if you're at the drag strip and you want to do a launch at, let's say, like four or 5,000 RPM, um, when you're spinning up that heavy flywheel, you actually have some energy spooled up. And I'm sure that's true with uh, really like high level drag racing where you're on slicks and, you know, you're running tons of power. But the other side of that, too, is that you are um, sort of using up some of your engine's power to spin that heavy flywheel. So the lightweight flywheel will accelerate faster. Uh, I suspect if you have like a track only car, like a really high horsepower with slicks, you might want that heavier flywheel to help you just a little bit with those launches. But if you have more of an like an all around car, something you're gonna drive on the road, on the track, maybe drive in the canyons, that lightweight flywheel is actually pretty nice because it gives you the sense of a faster accelerating car. All right, well, let's get started. Um, I gotta pull this transmission out. I never expected to be pulling out this transmission this quickly, but uh, you know, that's how it goes. Uh, this will be a good test as to uh, how removable I made this transmission. You know, when I built this, I really tucked it in close to the transmission and I really didn't assume I'd be pulling out the transmission anytime soon. I, I really didn't expect to pull out the transmission alone ever. So hopefully it doesn't give me too much trouble and I really hope I don't have to pull out the engine with it. All right, I got the uh, drive shaft taken out and I got the exhaust taken out as well. Um, actually, it's a good opportunity because I needed to do some adjusting with my exhaust too, so. So there she is. So I think the plan here is just to uh, support the transmission here with the transmission jack, take off this cross member and then, you know, and you know, it is pretty uh, tight here, these clearances. Um, so I'm not sure if I'm going to take off the transmission from the bell housing or if I'm going to try and take it all off at once. Um, but I'm hoping that once I take this cross member off here, 
I'll be able to angle this down a little bit. You know, the engine will be able to flex on its rubber mounts and I can, uh, and I can get these bolts off from around the, uh, either the transmission or the bell housing. We'll have to see. All right, let's go get that transmission jack. So one thing I was really uh, nervous about when I was building this cross member was that, you know, if I didn't have enough space to access the bolts here from the top. Um, but as you can see, you know, I just uh, lower this transmission down a little bit. And uh, from the bottom here, I'm actually able to pull these four bolts off pretty easily. So next step is just to pull off the shifter. I have a few wires here to unplug and I have to unplug that hydraulic line up there. And this thing should be ready to uh, be unbolted and come right off. Doing the old uh, triple extension technique here. Just got one more bolt to go. It's that last, that last uh, top right bolt. I think is the most difficult, but uh, all six bolts were actually pretty easy to get to. All right, just gotta get this last one off. All right, here we go. I was able to get it with the uh, bell housing still on it, so I didn't have to, you know, separate it here. Although I think it would have been a lot easier um, just separating it there. I might actually do that when I'm putting this thing back in. Uh, otherwise, it wasn't too bad. I think it took me about uh, took me about five hours, I think, to get this thing out of there. But uh, I've done easier transmission removals, and I've done harder ones too. So I, all things considered, I would say this wasn't too bad. Let's go take a look at my clutch and see what it looks like. All right.
right, the moment of truth. Let's see what this thing weighs. All right, we got 13.6 pounds. Twenty four pounds. Cool. So that's uh, just over 10 pounds weight savings there. And I know it doesn't seem like much, um, but what's important here is that this is weight on your engine's rotating assembly. So, of course, any weight savings is good. You know, lighter cars are faster cars, but weight saved on your rotating assembly, you know, things like your wheels, uh, your drive shaft is another part of the rotating assembly, has a lot more of an effect because it's not just, you know, pushing extra weight down the road, but it's actually robbing your engine of spinning power. And another thing too about your rotating assembly weight is that the sort of bigger diameter it is, the more of an effect it has. So um, when you have something very small, like a drive shaft like this, or however, you know, however big, um, the fact that you're not spinning it in this huge circle means that saving weight from there isn't going to have as much of an effect as when you're saving weight from this giant thing spinning. Um, I don't quite understand how the physics work, but basically the further distance the weight has to rotate, the more of an effect it has, I think. Um, don't quote me on that, but I think that's how that works. Um, so that's why flywheels are actually a very good place to save weight. Now here's another reason why I decided to go with the uh, aluminum flywheel. Um, because... There you go, look at that. 34 pounds. So this clutch and pressure plate actually weighs more than the flywheel itself. This uh, this stock flywheel is actually really not that heavy. I mean, 23 pounds is pretty light for an OEM flywheel. So after this is all said and done, this actual total weight is going to be about 50 pounds. This actually would be closer to like, I don't know, maybe like a stock LS1 weight. I think that one weighs around, um, I think around 50 pounds or so. All right, so before I install this new stuff, one thing I want to do is have uh, the new aluminum flywheel and the old stock pressure plate um, balance together. I'm actually going to bring these two into a shop and have them put on some sort of uh, rotating assembly. I've actually never done this before, so I'll have to call around and see who's able to do this, but um, I want to bolt them together, you know, mark where they're bolted together, and then um, have them actually balanced on a machine just to make sure this thing's dialed in as smooth as possible. This is a used pressure plate and clutch, so I think it's a good idea. All right, well, I think that's pretty good progress for today. Um, I made quite a mess, and as soon as I get this thing back from the machine shop, We'll get this back up and running. And uh, back to the drag strip.